Everyone wants to live an inspired life, yet so many people search for happiness following the footsteps of peers and taking advice from people who have different values and outcomes to which they're searching. There are people born into wealth, graduated from the best universities in the world, and there are people who have none of that and yet are living extraordinary lives full of fulfillment and reward. The purpose of this podcast is to share insights and strategies that allow you to question the status quo and think freely, so you can design your life and be who you want to be. We get one life. Time is our most valuable asset. I believe that when we're free and able to focus on meaningful work, we become better human beings. This is Always Free, and I'm your host, Jason Greystone. Welcome to the leading podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. You can connect with Jason on social media and subscribe to the Jason Greystone YouTube channel for weekly videos. Don't forget to also subscribe to the weekly newsletter to receive frequent educational content and action steps to help you design your life so you can be who you want to be. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongreystone.com. All right, guys, welcome back to Always Free. Hope you've had a good week. And uh, if it's the first time you're listening, this is the best podcast, the number one podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. And if this is the first time you've ever heard the podcast after you've listened to the podcast, I really appreciate it if you could just give it a quick rating and a review. Um, If you're listening to it on iTunes especially, uh, if not, just give it a little heart or a thumbs up just so we can get this thing to the top of the charts and keep it as far up as possible to spread the messages inside this uh, inside this podcast. So I had a bit of a bad throat this week, so if the throat goes a little bit husky, I apologise in advance, but I didn't want to miss an episode. I record these each and every Thursday, so they're off the cuff. I kind of bullet point what I want to talk about based on questions that I get and conversations I have, and then I just roll with it, and I want to keep that consistency. So this episode is going to be really, really heavily based around uh, mindset towards money at the beginning, and then we're going to go into... Um, some really powerful questions that I think everyone should ask themselves when they're thinking about becoming financially independent. So lots and lots to take in. going to share with you some strategies as well, as always, some little golden nuggets. I'm going to teach you how you can become far more knowledgeable without even changing your lifestyle. So I'm, I'm excited to share that with you. So I was talking to people the other day I was talking to a group of people about the lottery and I just want to talk about the lottery on here I'm not going to kind of bore you with all the statistics about the probability of winning and and all that kind of stuff because you get these big euro million jackpots if you're in the UK and and Europe or you get kind of these big state um, lotteries that rack up where there's no winners and they're racking up and racking up. I think the the top one was like almost a billion or a billion dollars, um, <laughs> which is just crazy. We've had a couple of a hundred million pounds and a hundred million euros and all that kind of stuff. But the question, the question that I had, because it was kind of people doing the lottery, and the question I have is, why are you playing the lottery? You know, why do people play the lottery? And it's probably, you know, it's probably a ridiculous question, but the answer is obviously they want to become multi-millionaires, right? They want to win lots and lots and lots and lots of money. And if, if you was in the billion one, then you want to become a billionaire. But the point is that people just play the lottery to become millionaires. And that's the objective. The The objective is to kind of buy a ticket, hope and pray to kind of win millions and millions and i know it's been dubbed kind of the the tax on the poor because it this typically goes out to people that are in this fingers crossed approach and i'm not like because i know there's some people that that just do it for a bit of fun but usually it's down to people who have got this kind of they're praying right they're praying that they're winning and they're kind of spending it before they've even got it in their in their hands and there's this ridiculous uh, odds on winning it's like anything from kind of 100 to 300 million to one uh, chance of winning but the thing is this is what I was kind of talking about my office here is full of books I've read over 600 books already I started reading when I was about 21 and uh, I've just read tons and tons of self-development books 
self-help books from business to wealth creation to investing to trading to you know marketing to relationships all different genres all on self-development and empowerment and I've read tons and tons and tons of books and there are lots and lots and lots of books from people who have become millionaires or billionaires and they've written books about how they did it <laughs> and I've got lots of those books right I've got lots of those books I've read over 600 of those books but the thing is I don't remember anyone once saying that they made their money from winning the lottery in any of those books <laughs> I don't remember any one of those books uh, where anyone talks about how they played the lottery to earn their millions. You know, I've I've got books from, I've got Finding My Virginity by Richard Branson. I'm looking at Richard Branson's book right now. Nowhere in here does he mention the lottery. Right, I've got books by Donald Trump, who's a multi-billionaire. I've got books by... Tony Robbins, in fact, Tony Robbins, I've got two books here by Tony Robbins. One's called Money Master the Game, which actually teaches you <laughs> how to how to become wealthy. And another book called Unshakable, which teaches you how to generate wealth and you know investment strategies and 401k plans and how to play the you know how to play the winning hand at money. But lottery isn't mentioned in that book either. And uh, I can't find where he mentions lottery in that book. Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. That is such a great book, right? Such a great book. Multi-millionaire, phenomenal book. He also wrote The 4-Hour Work Week, but my personal favourite is Tools of Titans. Can't see anything in there about the lottery. He doesn't seem to mention it. Uh, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, one of the first books I ever read uh, on business and self-development. He, In fact, that book on its own has been responsible for more millionaires than ever any other book, Think and Grow Rich, it's made more millionaires than any other book in history. And that was a book that transformed my life. And, you know, don't ask me where that statistic come from, but I've heard it. <laughs> but guess what? There's nothing about the lottery in that book. The law, the, there's another book by him, Law of Success. Everyone's read that book, Law of Success by Napoleon Hill. You know, there's nothing in there about the lottery. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki right? <laughs> that book is one of my favorite books. It's a book I recommend to everyone on about how Kiyosaki had a rich dad and a poor dad and he, what he learned from both, how to accumulate wealth, how to accumulate financial independence. And there's nothing about lottery in there either. So I'm not kind of condemning anyone who plays a lottery, but the chances of winning are not high. And my question is, if you really, really want this in your life, if you really, really want financial independence in your life, why leave it up to a 300, 100 million to one chance of it happening? Especially in today's age when it's never been easier to go and, you know, take these books, read these books, understand the principles behind them, do the action steps in the books, and you can do it you know, you can start a business from your phone or your laptop or your computer or you might learn how to trade or invest and that you just need your laptop for that. Whatever you're using to even listen to this podcast, you can probably do it on. But it just means that you're going to have to kind of get off your butt and do some work. And, and obviously you're going to have to change your thinking as well. It's not just going to come sitting on the couch and waiting for some lucky numbers to pop on the TV screen. That's, that, that is crazy. So... Many of you have heard of the belief cycle, right? Because at the end of the day, it's a result that you're after. And results that you get in your life are caused by the actions that you take, which are caused by the thoughts that you think, and they're caused by the beliefs that you hold. So reading these kind of books, the books that I've just listed off, and I'll put some books in the description of here that I recommend as well, or you can go on my website, it affects your belief. Think and Grow Rich affected my belief. Since I read that book at 21, I've generated millions and millions and millions of pounds. You know, they change your thoughts and the way that you think every day. And because they alter your beliefs, they alter your behavioral patterns and your actions and your thoughts. And then when you take the actions, you get results. You get results. The difference between a millionaire and someone who has 900 pounds to their name is that the millionaire has different beliefs about what's possible. 
So they think different things and they take different actions. And that's it. That's the whole formula. And most of these millionaires and these, these great minds have written books. They've frozen their mind and put it into a book. So if you can learn to kind of rewire your beliefs and your thoughts, and you're listening to this podcast right now, you're, you're, you're taking action. You know, you're trying to change your thoughts and beliefs, and that's great. And I'm kind of just sharing with you a story about the kind of lottery conversation that I had. But I want you to get that your mind is everything. When you start to believe something and you open your mind to different ways of thinking, that's when you change your actions because you, you believe different things and you take actions towards different things. And then what happens is those your thoughts will become reality. They did for me. In my experience, is 100% strike rate. 100% strike rate. Reading books is like having a millionaire in your house, by your side, 24 hours a day. You know, learning their beliefs, learning their thoughts, their actions, their experiences. Reading books like that is the best way to become a millionaire, not playing the lottery. I guarantee you that if you read books like that and you do everything that they say, you will become a millionaire. And it's not a one in 300 million chance or a one in 100 million chance. It's a one in one. It's a hundred percent chance. If you do what they say and you do what they do and you don't skip anything and you actually do the stuff, and you put the plan together and you let the mind open and you, you use the information in the books to take actions, you it's a hundred percent that you will. You'll manifest the same results as they do. It's as simple as that. You might have heard me say before, how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you really, really want something in life, are you really gonna leave it to chance? Are you really gonna leave it to a one in one hundred million chance? Because I hope not. Because that's a very disempowering way to go through your life. You have the resources available for the same price as a lottery ticket. Like You've got the resources available to guarantee those results. Why would you go through and risk not having what you really want on a 1 in 100 million chance of getting it? I, I just can't get my head around that. So as I said, I'm, I'm not condemning buying lottery tickets. I'm really not. But what I am condemning is the psychology behind kind of forfeiting your goals and leaving them to chance, leaving them to one in 100 million, when I know for a fact, and I know from experience, that you can get your goals, you can hit your goals, if you put in the work. Change your thinking, do some work, overcome obstacles, overcome challenges. You can get the results that you want, trust me. Don't leave it to chance, don't buy a lottery ticket and close your eyes and do nothing else and hope that you'll win it. Hope that you'll just kind of fall into that lifestyle. It's not going to happen. Do the work. Change your thinking. And you'll get there. You'll get there with 100% certainty. I'm not going to bang on about the lottery too much more. But if the message is meaningful for you. Maybe you have some friends or family. You kind of fall victim to the lottery mentality. Share this podcast with them. Let them know what they, you know. Let me know what they think. And let let just maybe send me a message. Or send me an email. Let me know what, what they think. But my really goal for this podcast is to kind of have someone who was going to do the lottery and then go and invest in some books instead. Or And I'm going to teach you, I'm going to share with you a little strategy, a little tip in a minute. But I know, and I'll share some links on here of some books on Amazon, but, you know, the price of a book, I'll share, you know, I'll share 10 books in the description. The price won't even be $100. And I bet, that that collection of books, if you follow them and you do the action steps in the books, you will become a millionaire. Simple as that. And it's not going to happen in a week or a month and probably not even a year, okay? It's going to take years, but it will happen with 100% certainty. I just, I, honestly, I don't know how to convey the strength of my belief on this any anymore because I'm just living proof of it. So the question is, yeah, okay, but how do I go read? Okay, so I'm, I get this all the time where people say I don't have time to read, I don't like reading, I don't like reading books. So I'm going to share with you a little tip here, and I shared with it in my newsletter. What you want to do is you want to go on to Amazon.com. Okay, go on to Amazon.com and type in waterproof Bluetooth speaker. Okay, and you'll find these little pop-up Bluetooth speakers that range from about £10 to £20, £30, something like that. Buy one. Okay, the next step, stick that up in your bathroom. Stick it up in your bathroom, in the toilet, on the mirror, in the shower, wherever, right? The next step is to go and get yourself an Audible membership. 
Audible is the Audible version of books from Amazon, and it's about six dollars a month or seven dollars a month. And you can get a book credit. You don't pay for the book. You just download the credit. You can pick a book, download the book, listen to the book. Now, if you was just spending 15 minutes per day in the shower, on the toilet, you know, brushing your teeth, all that kind of stuff. The average book takes around five hours, five and a half hours to read on Audible. Okay, the average self-help book's about 35,000 words, and that's about five hours to five and a half hours reads. Now, if you was to just press play on your phone every time you went into the toilet or the shower and you listened to the Audible books, that would allow you to read up to 90 hours of books per year. Now, if you divide 90 by the average book of five hours, let's just say 5.5 hours, that's 16 and a half books per year that you wasn't reading before. More than one a month. And the great thing about Audible is there's also a speed function. So you can listen to them at 1.25 speed or one and a half speed or even two times speed if you can take in information that quickly. I personally can't. But if I have mine on 1.25 speed and in that time you can speed it up. So you can add another quarter of those books to that that learning curve and you can increase you can get to 20 books maybe per year and then that doesn't include for your commuting to work because you can stick it on the bluetooth and your stereo and your in your car if you drive to work maybe you listen to the headphones you get on the train that's even more right and the point is you're building all this knowledge without changing your lifestyle without sitting down and having a read or set aside time to read you're just putting on your headphones or you're getting in the shower and going to the toilet like you normally do brushing your teeth and you just click play every time you go in the bathroom click play so go on amazon grab yourself a bluetooth speaker get yourself an audible um subscription and i've got some of the book recommendations in this uh, description of this podcast that you can start straight away and if you do all the action steps in these books you will become a millionaire much, much more certain uh, about you becoming a millionaire than doing a lottery ticket. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I just want to give you guys, I did an Instagram live story this week. And um, I also went to see one of my mentors, John Demartini, uh, earlier on in the week as well. And it kind of inspired me to share with you some questions that you want to might you might want to ask yourself when it comes to building wealth because a lot of people who kind of listen to this podcast or try and read wealth books and financial independence books and saving books and investing books and trading books and all that stuff and they're trying to learn but they don't really have a solid plan and they don't know what they're working to it's a bit intangible so I sort of want to share with you nine questions that I want you to write down And you don't have to answer them as you're listening to this, obviously, but just write the questions down and go and have a think about them. Go and find out the answers, do the calculations and write them down. Fill in the answers to these nine questions. And I guarantee if you do this, you will get slapped in the face. You will get punched in the face so hard. And, you know, at at the best case scenario, you'll think, ah, great. You know, that's I feel good. But these are the questions. So grab a pen and I'm going to go through the questions. So number one is, do you know the total value of all of your liquid assets? All of your assets. Okay, so that could be some cash that you've got in the bank. It could be some money in funds. It could be some gold or silver. It could be, you know, a savings account somewhere. Anything that you've got, I would even class kind of if you've got a Rolex watch or some jewelry that's quite easy to shift, I wouldn't say diamond rings and things like that. I would say, you know, a Rolex watch, you can pretty, you can shift pretty quickly and they go up in value. Any liquid assets that you can kind of liquidate and get your cash within a week, say. So once you know that, write the figure down. Okay, add it all up and write the figure down. The next question, question number two is, what are your total liabilities? So what's your liabilities? How much do you pay out every single month? Add it all up and write that figure down. And then question number three is, what is your net worth? 
So your net worth can just be calculated between one and two. All of your assets minus your liabilities, that will give you your net worth. And most people don't know that, right? They just don't know that. They're not aware of it. Question number four is, what exactly is the annual passive income that you would need per year to live on? So if you take your living expenses now, at the bare bones, like let's just say your lifestyle right now, your current lifestyle, what does that cost? What are your living expenses every month? And what would be the passive income you would love to live on per year? So take the living expenses for one month, multiply them by 12. Let's just say that your, your living expenses are £2,000 a month. Okay, times that by 12, you've got 20, let's say 25 grand, right? 25 grand, round it off, that's your annual living expenses. That means that you would need, on question four, you would need £25,000 passive income to live, to not have to work ever, Okay. So the next question, question five is, what average interest rate do you think that you can yield annually? So what I mean by that is, what return on investment do you think that you can get? So whether that's in low cost index funds, maybe a a very low passive investment that's kind of doing 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9 10%. Maybe you've got some real estate investment trust and you can you're happy that you can kind of get eight to ten percent, seven to ten percent per year. Um, if you're a trader, you know, if you're the traders in tier one, you're obviously doing a lot better. We've got Gabrielle who's doing 72% per year. Uh, but what I'm talking about is, you know, if you're a trader, great, that's gonna that's gonna notch it up. But very, very conservatively, let's just say that you stuck it in um, you know, a, a growth fund. S&P 500 growth fund and you're doing 6%, 7%, something like that. Let's just say 7, 7% per year. Okay, write down what you think you could yield. The next thing is, what is the average inflation rate in your country? So wherever you're listening to this, there'll be an average inflation rate. And I'm not talking about kind of the last year or two. Go about 20 years. Go look over 20 years and do the average across 20 years. Because there'll be some up years and down years and there'll be some crashes and all that kind of stuff. Just go over 20 years and write that, that, that figure down. The next question is, what exactly is the gross total liquidity you would need to invest to achieve your passive income per year? So we said that your, we said 25 grand, right? So if, you've, if you need 25 grand, if you had 25 grand a year coming in passively right now, and you didn't have to go to work, what would be the figure you would need to invest in order to spit out 25 grand per year? And there's a very simple way of doing this. You just take 25 grand, okay, and you divide it by 0.07, which is our 7% yield that we thought we could get. Okay, now if you're a trader and you're doing much more, obviously it's going to be much more. We're going very conservative here. We're going to go 7%. And that will give you a, a sum total of £357,142. Now that's all you need. 357 grand. If you had 357 grand now, you put it into a bank, you put it into a, uh, a fund at 6% per year and you no longer have to work and you can cover 25 grand a year income forever, right? Without chipping into the original investment. Make sense? Now, you don't, that doesn't allow for inflation, but you've already told me what your inflation is. So if you just build that into that sum, add that to, to that sum, whatever that is, add that on top and that's the figure you need. Let's just say we need... $365,000 or pounds. £365 to produce 25 grand a year forever. Now, a lot of people have that equity in their home, and yet they go to work every single day while their house sits empty to go to a job that they don't like, and if they just had the free time, they could be doing something that they actually love, or they could be working on learning how to trade, or they could be working on how to better their investment return, or they could be working on a business that they actually enjoy, but they won't give themselves that time. It's amazing how many people have got that much equity and don't want to work, and yet they don't want to sell the house, (laughs) right? 
So that's question number seven. Question number eight is, what is the shortfall between the, to the total gross liquidity that you need and the annual passive income that you need per year? Okay, so that will just be, that will give you a milestone. It will give you a kind of a, a peg in the sand. Now you know what you need. Because let's just say you need 365 grand, you might have 250 grand. You might have 200 grand. But at least it gives you something where you can say, right, so I just need another 100 grand or 150 grand. And you can move, sway your attention towards that. And, you, and you're focused on it and you're aware of it. And you can start going, right, every single bonus I get, every single dividend I get from my business, every single, I'm going to whack into this account and I just need to get 80,000 more or 70,000 more or 60,000 more. And then the next question, the last question is, what is your strategy? Like once you've written all that down and you know the answers to that, you've either been hit in the face really hard or you've gone, ah, that's, I'm not too far away. But the question is, what is your strategy? Because it's also going to uncover that you are going to be working until you're very, 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 very old if you don't have this stuff together, if you're not working on this in some way. So, you know, are you going to learn about investments? Are you going to learn how to trade the financial markets? Are you going to, are you going to learn how to enhance your existing investment uh, portfolio returns? You know, are you going to build a business to inject more cash into your savings? What are you going to do? What is your strategy? Write that question down. What is my strategy? And it will make you think. So I highly recommend you do that. Like really, really do recommend that you write all those questions down and write the answers. Don't put it on a on a laptop or an iPad. Write it down. There's real power in actually writing that stuff out and seeing it in the flesh so let me know how you get on with that because until you write it down you don't really have a strategy it's, it's kind of you it's all up in the air and you don't really know what you're doing with it and just going back to the lottery winners people who win the lottery they don't actually know what they're doing with the money they get the money they don't have a plan how to spend it they've almost spent it before they've got it they've got they kind of spend it all on luxuries consumables and it's gone before they even receive the check now what people don't realize is most lottery winners go broke and that's just because they don't have a plan. They don't have a strategy on how to spend the money and they don't value financial independence as much as they thought they did before they bought the ticket. I got asked on how I would spend a million pounds. If I won a million pounds, let's just say I won a million pounds tomorrow. First, I, I've got a strategy for that. I've got a plan for that. Like if I, if I, it would be no different than receiving my monthly, um, paycheck or dividend or income stream or or my yearly dividend any any income that i receive gets treated the same way and if i won a million pounds on a lottery it would get treated the same way so the first thing i'd do is if i had to pay tax on it i'd run it through my investment company which means the tax would be capped at 30 percent but that's still 300 grand it's amazing how many people don't think about tax when they uh, win the lottery. I know some lotteries are tax-free and what have you, but let's just say that you're given a million pounds by, you know, any way, not just a lottery, but any way. Likeliness is you're going to have to pay 30% tax, which is that's 300 grand out of that million already. So that gives you 700k left over. I'd probably take 30 grand then to kind of blow just luxuries, 70, 30 grand to blow on luxuries. 70 grand would put into my self-development account so that would go purely into education to keep growing my mind and that would leave me what 600k then i would take the 600k and i have an allocation ratio at the moment of seven to three which means it's a 70 30 split i would allocate 420,000 to my passive investments 180 grand to my active trading speculations and uh, also a bit of startup business portfolio as well and Obviously, with the 420 grand that's going into my passive investments, because the S&P 500 is quite high at the moment, it's a, a, a you know retest of the existing or the most recent highs. I wouldn't just dump the 420k straight into my passive investment portfolio because I would need to scale it in over a period of about four years. 
um, to, to kind of benefit from that time diversification, that dollar cost averaging. If I just dumped it in all at one price, that wouldn't make sense. That would be a stupid, uh, stupid move. So I'd filter it in at, uh, at monthly intervals over about four years. So that leaves the 180K. That would go into my speculative investments, 90% which would go into my Forex account and 10% into other speculations like the wine and the, the startup businesses. So you can see that if I got a million pounds tomorrow, I've already dealt with it. Within 24 hours, you know, it's done. It's all in. I get on with my life and I just keep doing what I'm doing. And not many people have that plan and not many people have a plan about their financial independence and it's because they don't write stuff down like this so lots and lots to kind of take on board i had loads more that i wanted to talk about but i have to save that for next week so i don't want to make these podcasts too long but hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you do the action steps and i just want to say if you just follow your dreams aggressively and don't leave anything up to chance and don't leave it up to the lottery just follow them you will achieve them and that is it. So hopefully you enjoyed the podcast, guys. Give it a little rate and review. Have a great rest of your week and weekend, and I'll see you next week. to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongreystone.com.